new episode of Sunday with the Word of God. Let us be in the presence of God and invoking His name, we begin. In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. Proclamation from the Book of Sirach The Lord is a God of justice, who knows no favorites. Though not unduly partial toward the weak, yet he hears the cry of the oppressed. The Lord is not deaf to the wail of the orphan, nor to the widow when she pours out her complaint. He who serves God willingly is heard. His petition reaches the heavens. The prayer of the lowly pierces the clouds. It does not rest till it reaches its goal, nor will it withdraw till the Most High responds, judges justly, and affirms the right, and the Lord will not delay. The Word of the Lord Responsorial Psalm Let our response be, The Lord hears the cry of the poor. I will bless the Lord at all times. His praise shall be ever in my mouth. Let my soul glory in the Lord. The lowly will hear me and be glad. The Lord confronts the evildoers to destroy remembrance of them from the earth. When the just cry out, the Lord hears them, and from all their distress, He rescues them. The Lord is close to the brokenhearted, and those who are crushed in spirit He saves. The Lord redeems the lives of His servants. No one incurs guilt who takes refuge in Him. A proclamation from Paul's second letter to Timothy. Beloved, I am already being poured out like a libation, and the time of my departure is at hand. I have competed well. I have finished the race. I have kept the feet. From now on, the crown of righteousness awaits me, which the Lord, the just judge, will award to me on that day and not only to me, but to all who have long for his appearance. At my first defense, no one appeared on my behalf, but everyone deserted me. May it not be held against them, but the Lord stood by me and gave me strength, so that through me the proclamation might be completed and all the Gentiles might hear it. And I was rescued from the lion's mouth. The Lord will rescue me from every evil threat and will bring me safe to his heavenly kingdom. To him be glory forever and ever. Amen. The Word of the Lord. Spirit, a reading from the Holy Gospel according to Saint Luke. Glory to you, O Lord. Jesus addressed this parable to those who were convinced of their own righteousness and despised everyone else. Two people went up to the temple area to pray. One was a Pharisee, and the other was a tax collector. The Pharisee took up the position and spoke this prayer to himself. O oh God, 
I thank you that I am not like the rest of humanity, greedy, dishonest, adulterous, or even like this tax collector. I fast twice a week and I pay tithes on my whole income. But the tax collector stood off at a distance and would not even raise his eyes to heaven, but bit his breast and prayed, O oh God, be merciful to me, a sinner. I tell you, the latter went home justified, not the former. For whoever exalts himself will be humbled, and the one who humbles himself will be exalted. The Gospel of the Lord. Praise to you, Lord Jesus Christ. In the Gospel passage of this Sunday, Jesus speaks about a parable. Two people went up to the temple area to pray. Actually, only one of them went to pray while the other went to perform a prayer. One was a tax collector and the other a Pharisee. The tax collector was a sinner, an outcast, and was looked down by others. And so he stood at a distance and his prayer is not a list of all of his good things but simply a recognition of his sinfulness. And he turns to God and says, Have mercy on me, a sinner. And this prayer is one that the Lord can never refuse. While the Pharisee, on the other hand, went up to the temple to do a ritual prayer, he begins, O oh God, but what follows is hardly a prayer. He begins to compare himself to the tax collector and thanks God that he is not like the rest of humanity. And it seems, it senses that he bargains with God by reminding him as if he needed any reminding of all of the good things that he has done. And Jesus concludes the parable saying, the tax collector went home justified while the Pharisee had nothing to justify himself before God's eyes. Let us quickly unfold the parable. Jesus does not condemn the Pharisee for his good deeds. The passage does not say that the Pharisee is lying about his good deeds. The Pharisee gets it all wrong because he locates the source of the goodness in himself. He appears to have no need of God. He only mentions God at the beginning of his prayer just to get God's attention, after which he begins is his self-praise. He goes to God full of himself, so self-absorbed that he has shut out God's action that there is no space for God to do, to add anything in his life. As the name Pharisee means separated one, the Pharisee remains separated from others and from God himself. Whereas for the tax collector, Jesus does not anyway approve of his sins. Jesus only commends the fact that the tax collector exhibits the right attitude before God, the simplicity. He comes to God empty of himself so that God can fill him up. The tax collector brings only the thing he has. He has his sins in exchange of God's mercy and he offers it before God. The tax collector thus comes with an attitude of humility he has no need to keep away from others or from God. He feels the need of God in his life. The prayer is real when one approaches God in all simplicity and humility and acknowledge before God what you have and what you are. It is a relationship with God so that God can transform you and fill you with his grace so that you may become an instrument to bring glory of God. Amen.
Awitin ko man Lahat ng awit sa mundo Di kayang ilarawan ang Katakilaan mo Kulang ang lahat ng tula Kulang maging mga salita Upang ihayat Kabutihan mo Compassionate Father, we confess our sins and we humbly come to you to find forgiveness and life. We come to you in our need to seek your protection against the COVID-19 virus that has disturbed and claimed many lives. We ask you now to look upon us with love and by your healing hand, dispel the fear of sickness and death. Restore our hope and strengthen our faith. We pray that you guide the people tasked to find cures for this disease and to stem its transmission. Bless our efforts to use the medicines developed to end the pandemic in our country. We pray for our health workers that they may minister to the sick with competence and compassion. Grant them health in mind and body, strength in their commitment, Protection from the disease. We pray for those afflicted, may they be restored to health. Protect those who care for them. Grant eternal rest to those who have died. Give us the grace in these trying times to work for the good of all and to help those in need. May our concern and compassion for each other see us through this crisis and lead us to conversion and holiness. 
grant all this through our Lord Jesus Christ, your Son, who lives and reigns with you in the unity of the Holy Spirit, God forever and ever. Amen. We fly to your protection, O Holy Mother of God. Do not despise our petition in our necessities, but deliver us always from all dangers. O glorious and blessed Virgin, Amen. Our Lady, Health of the Sick, pray for us. Saint Joseph, pray for us. Saint Raphael the Archangel, pray for us. Saint Rock, pray for us. San Lorenzo Ruiz, pray for us. San Pedro Calungsod, pray for us. The Lord be with you and with your spirit. And may Almighty God bless you, your families, dear and near ones, the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit. Amen.